Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. It never gets old, does it? Eh? So there you go. Look at that. Ange once again is the first one in. Hi, all. G'day, Ange. How you going? Two people have joined us already, so it's good to see you. Hello, everybody, on this beautiful Wednesday night. For the first time, the weather is actually nice outside. The sun's just gone down, and we're actually encouraging everybody to say, stuff the outdoors, join us indoors for a bit of hardcore nerdy action. And, in fact, some people are so tragic. We've got eight people watching us already, and I haven't even stopped Googling on yet, so there you go. Anyway, I've got to introduce my co-hosts and lads, uh, MPS and Jeffro. How are we tonight, guys? We're most excellent, as always. <laughs> Bodacious, if you will. <laughs> All right. So um, now we're going to move on. Some people already jump on the gun. Guys, you got to slow down. Hold those horses. Hold like the Lone Ranger. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold your horses. Okay. So um, it's actually... Huh? What? Hi, ho, Silver. Yeah, there you go. So it's almost nine o'clock. That's oh, just like the timing is absolutely fantastic. So we've decided to pluck this one out of the ether and have a bit of a gurgle on because you know you want to about zombies, right? Now, as a few people have posted already, if you were to ask, oh, what's the movie, first movie or first show or whatever that featured the zombies, you could argue that it would be Zombies of the Stratosphere, right? But the reality is there were no zombies in Zombies of the Stratosphere. How weird is that? They're actually like Martians or something, So, which is kind of groovy. So, uh, But that was a serial from uh, way back in the old days. Uh, where are we? Old days, 1952. Anyway, so there's no presentation. We're just going to have a bit of a natter, a bit of a gurgle about um, zombie movies. And, yes, someone did mention that uh, Zombies of the Stratosphere did actually feature a very young Linda Nimoy in one of his very, very early roles. So... Uh, how good is that? So um, I think the funny thing is that the zombie name didn't really come into play until, like, not that long ago because even, like, um, you had Night of the Living Dead. I mean, you had zombies in that, but they weren't called zombies. They were called ghouls. And, of course, prior to that, you had zombies in Plan 9 from Outer Space, which preceded Night of the Living Dead uh, by a number of years. Uh, and they had ghouls as well. But the difference with the Night of the Living Dead ones is the ghoul, the ghouls, we're eating the humans, mate, eating the brains. How good is that? So whereas the Plan 9 from Outer Space ones didn't. So, all right, so look at this. We've got people writing in stuff. Rob Zombie, yeah, Rob Zombie. That's kind of off the off the topic a little bit. Uh, there we go. So what do you guys reckon? Zombie movies and TV shows. What floats your boat? What gets you going? Well, I, I remember um, back in 1973 or 74, I think it was, um, Carl Kolchak, the Night Stalker. There was actually an episode that... Uh, was called the zombie and that was if you ever saw that show uh people still rave about how spooky it was i don't think there's been too many sort of spooky uh horror shows that have touched it since well i'll tell you something that's a bit of a horror show you know we mentioned about night of the living dead right so that was where the concept of the the, the walking dead sort of came into play and eating humans and whatever else i found when i was just doing a quick search now night of the living dead is actually on youtube it's actually in the public domain and i was going to watch it today and i just completely forgot because i haven't actually seen it but apparently some wags out there have actually made a a, 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 a rip-off version called night of the living karens because you know you've got all these people these <laughs> women who are causing all these problems with the covid crisis no i reckon that'd be quite amusing so uh there you go i thought i'd just uh, chuck that one in um uh okay here we go Definitions of a zombie, alive or dead. By technical definition, they are dead, honey. They are dead. So, Except uh, in one film, I think. There's one film called Warm Bodies where I think they sort of are oh, yeah, like, yeah. dead inside until they find love and then they warm up and become human again. So it's it's a heartwarming story of the, the dead coming to life. Um, yes, uh, Kelvin agrees. The Night Stalker zombie is excellent. And, of course, for those who never saw Night Stalker, it was a fantastic show with Carl Kolchak which was very, very cool. Uh, Colin, we'll talk about The Walking Dead probably a little bit later on. Uh, exactly right. One of the films now, we all have our favourites, I guess, in these things, and, um, I mean, I'm not really a zombie sort of aficionado. They don't really float my boat, even though somebody once said, one of our friends actually said, every movie should have zombies in it because it's absolutely <laughs> that just makes them great. Um, Return of the Living Dead from 1985, and I saw it at a midnight screening in the city and absolutely adored it. It was 
Fantastic. Do you guys ever see that one at all? With Dan O'Bannon made that one. So uh, you guys oh, ever see that? Yeah, absolutely. I do remember uh, uh, going to the cinema and also uh, it was a huge hit on video too. Yeah, I may yeah, have seen that- it on video back in the day, but yeah, not mm-hmm. lately. It had a couple of – because that one really did push the whole thing of eating the brains. And, of course, the zombies could speak, right, which was actually kind of groovy. So you had the girls stuck up in the uh, in the loft and the dude's trying to break through, the zombie dude's trying to break through. Uh, and he says, you know, hey, Tina, I know you're up here because I can smell your brains. <laughs> um, fast or slow zombies, that's a very good, good question, uh, depending on what you like. If you like your World War Z, where they're absolutely on turbochargers, that mm. makes them unbelievably scary. If, you know, dudes chasing you as fast as you can run, tell you what, that's never a good thing. So, um, whereas you get you know, the TV shows that go really slowly. Sorry, dude, go for it. I prefer the slow zombies. They're easier to deal with because you just have to skip ahead a few steps and you and you just can always be in front of them. Whereas those World War Z ones, oh, they're like ants. They, they, they travel <laughs> right up on top of each other and create bridges and take down aeroplanes and all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, wasn't I, World I War Z a grouse? Sorry, Jeff. Wasn't yeah. World War Z a grouse movie? I mean, that sequence when they actually are climbing the walls and all the rest of it is like, mate. Then they breach the thing because they got the chick with the microphone and they give you get the high pitched whine and whatever. I mean, that that was that was grouse. I, I got to admit, I'm a bit of a World War Z fan, Jeffro. Give me the uh, slow zombies any time because there's nothing better than watching a movie where there's a bit of tension. Because obviously, the slow ones, you you just never know when they're going to actually grab. The uh, the person, whereas the fast one, it's like it's just it's just a blink cut. They're straight on you. So you know, slow ones for uh, as I said that cinematic tension. Yeah, nah, fair call there. Uh, yeah, so good on you, Claire. I was going to bring that one. It's actually spelled it incorrectly, but yeah, Shaun of the Dead uh, was a huge uh, favourite with a lot of fans. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys ever seen that one before? Shaun of the Dead. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It started yeah. off the whole revival before Shaun of the Dead. Zombies were pretty much, pardon the pun, a dead issue. So, uh, um, and I mean, it basically allowed George Romero, who did Night, Dawn, and Day of the Living Dead, uh, to actually uh, continue on with uh, further uh, movies. And uh, so happy was he about being able to sort of return to that zombie uh, uh, genre that he actually got uh, the guy that made Shaun of the Dead to actually do cameos in his movies. Uh, for Stacey, yes, is there a funny movie about zombies? Shaun of the Living, uh, Shaun of the Dead, actually, it would be uh, probably about one of the funniest ones, which is kind of groovy. I, I didn't even thought of this one oh. from Spanking. Thriller. Yeah, I, I, actually, I actually did think of that. And another good one for uh, comedy is uh, Zombieland. Uh, they did uh, two movies of that, and that's actually quite funny. I thought uh, Claire's comment, <laughs> the way she felt Sean was maybe Sean Bean, you know, because he seems <laughs> to die and everything, so maybe he became a zombie. Oh, look, this is a good oh, Sorry, this is a grouse. I like this one. I'm with MPS General. <laughs> Very good. Uh, guess what, Cleve? Still spelled Sean incorrectly. It's S H A U N. Actually, when it's spelled like that, it's like he's got, like, they're doing cutting the hair. <laughs> so, uh, Maybe it should be Sean of the head. Huh? Maybe the haircut should be Sean of the head. Uh, where are we? Uh, Resident Evil absolutely loved Resident Evil. Awesome, awesome, awesome show. And I reckon that was kind of good. And they were, they were chasing the blood and all the rest of it. And uh, they, they got a need to feed, which is kind of grippy. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I gotta admit, I'm definitely a bit of a Resident Evil fan. Um, uh, it's very funny with the Return of the Living Dead. There was actually four sequels. Can you believe it? I mean, how about this? Re- mm-hmm. Return of the Living Dead Part Two, uh, I think Part Three, Necropolis and Rave to the Grave. Go figure, eh? So, uh, there we go. Very good. Uh, my pet hate. I, I, think he's, I think he's doing a series over in New Zealand that's uh, continuing on with the main character, which I can't. I've just lost the name of the main character. Hang on, what? And I thought they were continuing that series over it and filming it in New Zealand um, with the main character, Ash. That's what I was thinking of, Ash. Yeah, because he's. Oh, uh, that's Evil Dead. Oh, Evil Dead. All right, so Evil Dead's got a, a series that was being made over in New Zealand a little while back. I don't know if Evil Dead was zombie specifically. It was more like no, um, no, possession. No. Two okay. or something. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Is there a UK zombie movie that has space between slow walking zone and old guy walking <laughs> in a walking frame? Oh, <laughs> what? There's a, there's a film. Jeffrey, you might have seen this one. Um, 
I think it's called Cockneys and Zombies or Zombies and Cockneys or something like that. Have you seen oh, that? Oh, yes. yes. That I is a cack-up of a film. If you want to see something funny, you've got to see Cockneys and Zombies. Um, they're, uh, you try and explain I'm trying to think of how you well, would explain it, that. It's it's uh, basically there's a nursing home, and the great thing is that they've got some um, really brilliant old-time uh, movie actors to appear in it. Uh, and yeah. um, bas basically, they uh, they they step up and and show their metal, so to speak. And you know, they uh, yeah, it's just just really funny just seeing these old timers sort of uh, you know um, really sort of stepping up. I like this uh, comment. About what's a zombie? I was like, oh yeah, me before he's had a coffee. Uh, I love that one. That's actually very very funny. I yeah, agree with you, William. Yeah. In terms of a name for a movie, Pride and Prejudice with Zo it's actually with zombies, not and zombies with zombies. Absolutely ingenious. It goes alongside uh, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Um, uh, sorry, Darren. Uh, Life Force was just vampires, no zombies in that movie. And it's actually based on the story Space Vampires. So uh, they don't tend to sort of mix the two together. So you've got one or the other. Um, TV course, absolute I Zombie. What the hell is I Zombie? I'm not it sure is a, um, it's a TV uh, series uh, on one of the cable channels. <laughs> Dead set zombies on Big Brother. That'd be just about every Big Brother show they've ever had, isn't it? So, <laughs> oh, golly, absolutely fantastic. So, there you go. Uh, we, 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 um, yeah, not everybody likes zombie movies. That's that's completely understandable. So, would we uh, class I Am Legend as a zombie film? Yes, uh, they are, but they're more vampires. They're based on the book I Am Legend, which is kind of funny because going back to Night of the Living Dead, George A. Marrero uh, had read I Am Legend. Um, and realized, oh, they're using vampires and that, so that's where he got the idea of doing zombies in his film. So, strictly speaking, they're vampires, not zombies, because they're not, I don't think they're necessarily dead, they're just being converted. Um, yeah. so it's a little bit, um, it's not exactly the same, so, um, that's for sure. Um, but yes, it's easy to sort of confuse the two. Uh, someone mentioned 28 Days Later earlier on, which was yeah. quite agreeable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I watched that uh, just the other day, actually, because I had that on, on record, and there's a sequel to that, which is 28 Weeks Later. Not to yes. confuse it with the, the 28 Days Sandra Bullock film. That's yes. completely different. Um, so, Dave, the name of the zombie sheep was called Black Sheep, and yes, it was actually made in New Zealand. So, yes. uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of kind of creepy and freaky at the same time um and the one that nobody has mentioned and there are a lot of movies yeah okay we'll allow for that right but the one that uh, i saw on um netflix uh only a couple of months ago and i thought outstanding was train to busan which is a south korean yeah. zombie movie and i tell you what that is hard yakka right there's a shitload of dudes turn into zombies these are fast zombies too right so daniel if you don't like your fast zombies or if you're a slightly um you got a bit of fan credibility around your waist and you can't move fast. You've got no hope. Train to Busan is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant yeah. as a zombie movie. And they, their makeup and that is just outstanding. So you guys seen yeah. that one before? No. Yeah, I saw it on Netflix. And I've got to say, if you're on a train and a zombie outbreak occurs, <laughs> you're done. You are done as a dinner. They just, it's awesome. And apparently there's a sequel coming or. Uh, yeah, yeah I think, I think, no, it's not a sequel as such. It's made by the same people. And it was actually on SBS the other night. It's to do with. Uh, like mystical stuff, oh, okay, um, but on the same lines, but not like in based in contemporary society. And I love this comment from Colin. Uh, yes, uh, Colin, I must admit, I got hooked into uh, Life Force because of the the lady who said not a single word and did not wear a single stretch of clothing. And uh, yes, when you're a young dude, that's all you need to enjoy a movie. What can I say? So let's um, <laughs> very very good stuff. Uh, Dead Set is a big brother of Busan. Yeah, so yeah, if you haven't had a chance, everybody, uh, Train to Busan, you must have a look at that. It's absolutely I think, brilliant. I think Any downside is you go watch the movie and read the subtitles at the same time. Sorry, dude, what was that? I think they're doing an Australian remake of that called Train to Frankston, aren't they? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, plenty of zombies in Frankston, I suppose. Some people say, oh, if you live in Frankston, we're just joking. Don't be, don't take it seriously. It's Fitzroy is where the zombies hang out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious me. So what do you reckon makes a good zombie movie? What's what's the deal, guys? Tell us your thoughts and opinions. What's a good one from a bad one? Well, for me, I guess the the best possible uh, zombie movie was uh, Dawn of the Dead. So that was actually the uh, uh, the second one that um, uh, came after uh, Night of the Living Dead. So it had the advantage of uh, a much bigger budget. Uh, it was in colour. And I just think, I mean... You've got to really have a good story. And this one was set in a shopping centre. 
and that was just so bizarre but it really really worked and great characters and uh really novel ways of decapitating the uh uh the zombies so there was one situation where they had a helicopter and of course the blades were going and of course next thing you know the good old zombie walks into the blades and whoosh, straight off so i i think novel killings is probably something that makes it fun for me um i like that frank's then is there scratching neck bolts <laughs> <laughs> oh golly um what about you uh, there was a good one up here i saw a moment ago uh aps what about you man what, what works for you dude I love watching zombie films with other people who are terrified of them. I remember watching Dawn of the Dead, the remake, oh, what, what was it, like 15 years ago? Is that when it came out? Thereabouts, yeah. maybe a little bit longer. And I was sitting there with someone, and when that first scene happens where the kid's about to tear apart the parents right at the beginning, I went, they went, no, this can't be happening. I went, oh, yeah, you wait for it. And then they just jumped. Um, I also know someone else who's on our our comments board that jumps at things like that too. And I love sitting, watching stuff like that with him. Don't I add? <laughs> um, I think this is the show you were talking about, uh, dude, the same people who made uh, Train to Busan made Kingdom. I think it's the same thing. So it can't be two different groups in South Korea making movies. I don't think so. Uh, so there you go. Check that out. Um, talking about seeing things with people who get a bit like edgy at this stuff. Now we're getting into the walking dead. Um, my other half, can't stand gore and all this sort of stuff in, in the movies. And there was an episode I was watching on a laptop one time, one of the early seasons of uh, The Walking Dead, there was actually a zombie stuck at the bottom of a well on the dude's farm and they had to try and pull him up because he was contaminating the water, right? And he's, and he's all horrible looking. And and as they pull him up with a rope, he rips in half, right? And his half his body's like dangling, whatever. Well, anyway, I showed that. I turned the laptop to Lynn and I said, get a load of this. And she goes, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely freaked out, but it was like the old train wreck thing, the car crash. I can't turn away. I've got to look. Ah! And she's actually in another room. Look. Ah! <laughs> Absolutely loved it. So uh, very, very good stuff. Uh, golly, golly, golly. Um, yeah, we like it, when I found that with Return of the Living Dead, it really worked for me because I like the idea that the zombies could actually speak. I thought that, that was actually kind of groovy. And they did have the thing about the brains. And the, there was the dead lady on the table. who's only got half a body. And they actually said, you know, to her, why do you eat people? And she said, not people, just brains. And then, of course, they ask, it's like, well, why do you just eat brains? It's brains is the pain, the pain of being dead. And it's, oh, it's a grouse scene. <laughs> Love it. Do you guys remember that at all? Surely you do, no. Jeffrey. You're a turn. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen it for a long time, but uh, after you've mentioned it, I feel like I should. Oh, yeah. It introduced the character of Tar Man, which was uh, very, very groovy um so yes very good stuff but i love i absolutely adore that movie it's, it's brilliant and there's a sequence of course they've got a dead dude because they're in a medical facility and they've got a, a cadaver hanging up in the um in the freezer there's the only one there he's got the bolts and spike on the head and he's just hanging there and of course he comes to life doesn't he <laughs> he's running around and they're going to try and cut his head off with a saw and ah oh, it's just absolutely fantastic so there you go ah uh, golly 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 uh, it interesting the the way that you have to kill a zombie you've got to go for the head you know it's not enough that you you de decapitate the head from the body, but the head can still bite. The body can die, but the head can still bite. And you go, well, hang on a second. So, yeah. yeah it's bending the laws of uh, credibility to a large degree. And I do like that in Walking Dead where you can cut the head off a thing and the head still, like, the, it doesn't make any sound. It's just the mouth is moving and all the rest. So I reckon that's kind of groovy. But you wonder, it's like, well, why would the brain still exist? And, of course, the thing I can never understand is, like, they want to eat. But, of course, there's no digestive system. They're like, what exactly are they doing? And they can't swallow because mm -hmm. nothing's moving. And, they, and is it just like shove it in the mouth and just chew and there's just blood pissing everywhere and, th and that's it? It doesn't make a great deal of sense. What do you reckon, dude? They, they need the calcium for so they don't get osteoporosis. <clears throat> good on you. But it's a good question, though. It's like, what exactly are they trying to do? It's like even in Resident Evil, right, uh, the Red Queen says, oh, yes, they've got this basic instinct, and the instinct is the need to feed, but they can't physically actually eat. So <laughs> does one, does a zombie look at a dude and go, yeah, no, I'm not in the mood today. I already had a feed earlier on. Um, or this is like, like, do they just go for certain body parts first? Or, I mean, why brains, for example, and all sort of things? So what do you reckon, guys? It puts, oh, a, bit like the, um, puts a bit of spin on the uh, brain food, uh, yeah. the brain food that people want to eat. Um, I just this wonder one. where they got the idea for. I feel the need, the need to feed, and their hands would yeah. get knocked off. Oh, just um, see that. Uh, William Knight of the Creeps. Yeah, that's every Wednesday night when you're sitting here with the three of us. So. <laughs> 
but yeah, that's the thing I always thought was funny. Is it's like, well, what do they do? They just stay there for the next four and a half hours, just munching down on this thing, or when do they stop and whatever else? So it's the one thing I don't think they've sort of really covered off in detail, along with the whole thing. Why the brain? You know, what's the what's the deal with that? So, but well, um, I think the, I think the big question is so. For instance, in Walking Dead, I'm not going to talk about the show itself, but the idea that there's so few humans left, what happens when there's no humans left? When they when they actually kill everyone and everyone's a zombie, what next? Well, then the world's taken over. It's like when um, in Star Trek, when the Borg take over, they just they, they just they just stop. Um, yeah, and I the like Borg the idea, do. huh? The Borg do other things. The zombies are just going to do. I don't want to get onto that. But yeah, in, yeah, in first contact, they take over the world. Um, the uh, if you use the World War Z concept, and I did actually like this, when there's no stimulus, they just stand still, right? They don't do anything. And the walking dead, they tend to sort of move around in herds and all the rest of it. So, um, but uh, you are right. I mean, the problem with the walking dead concept is because if you just die of natural causes, you turn into an undead person straight away. So you could argue that in time, depending on birth rates versus mortality rates, the whole world will be taken over by dead dudes before you know it. So I guess that's one thing that... Uh, uh yes oh that's an interesting comment the walking dead a show about a plague that infected the world whose production was stopped due to a plague that infected the world that's very good colin oh that's actually that, well done dude i do like that one actually um so speaking of the walking dead and fear the walking dead uh i gotta admit in terms of zombie tv shows they are is great it is, it, it, the way they the, the zombies are presented uh, and the fact that when there's one by itself, it's not such a big deal when there's a shitload of them, and there is usually a shitload of them, it's actually they're quite overpowering. And the way it's handled, not just because of you've got dead dudes everywhere, but, of course, how the humans interact with other humans. And I reckon in a real-life environment, if it happened for real, that's exactly what would happen. Some communities would try to be created, while at the same time other communities uh, would try and, you know, uh, like, exact dominance and, and superiority over everybody else. But the zombies in those shows... Yeah, they're 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 pretty pretty good stuff, and I liked how in The Walking Dead itself, because so many years have passed in the story, some of the some of the dudes they are like really half rotten and missing body parts, and you know they're really really chunky. They walk through the things, they just rip off their own skin and stuff, and they're not even aware of what they're doing. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty gruesome. They must have a whale of a time making that show. I, I got to say, the thing that sort of gets me when you think about that sort of concept, yeah, it's it's all well and good, but can you imagine the smell? Oh yeah, yeah. They don't touch the and dead, you know, yeah. splattered blood and all that sort of stuff. Mind you, none of the main characters are showering every day, so maybe it's not such a bad thing. You know, you can't smell your enemy. Yeah, it's a good point. So when they go into a building and they they're tapping on the walls and that to see if the nozzle's still, I mean, you reckon the nor unless the place everything smells so bad anyway, they've just adapted to it and they go, yeah, it's just part of the thing. But at the start, you're right, the smell would have been pretty bad. You got rotting meat just everywhere and. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty hardcore, but it was almost like they spend a whole lot of time working out what's the best way they can get zombies to just like like reappear, like they're buried under the ground or in the water, or you know they're really rotted away, or they've even been burnt and they're still moving around and stuff. And I did like the idea that you can burn them, like you, and, and they don't die still; they can still move around. I reckon that's kind of groovy. If they break bones and whatever, they're still active. So it's actually very very good stuff. So uh, and you are right, Thomas. Uh, yes, it does uh, explore the dark side of the living, which is probably the main point of the entire show so um, there you go how good is that very good uh any other zombie stuff out there kids another great zombie show is 15 days uh from daniel i'm not sure <laughs> don't you remember that film dude 15 days 15 oh, hours yeah yeah sorry oh my god yes yeah, so we're actually involved in a short film one time yeah well done daniel uh called 15 days so uh um about zombies taking over the world and doing their thing so very good um can't they how can they even see their eyes that's a good point aaron i mean theoretically they should be just walking around like blind people because like there's no eyesight so and yeah sensory organs obviously work like hearing and all the rest of it so yeah it's a very good point actually and how yeah. do, and how do they smell just terrible. as bad as always terrible <laughs> yeah exactly you're right uh, so you are right in a realistic sense if zombies existed they would just not do anything because they can't um see anything they can't hear anything they can't feel anything so yeah i guess we have to sort of suspend reality a little bit there so uh uh yes but uh but no matter what they're just damn <laughs> they're just damn cool <laughs> god unbelievable what else we got there lads i find it interesting that in say Shaun of the dead uh and then walking dead did a little bit too um that the main character actually kept his best friend who became a zombie, locked him up in the garage and was sitting there playing games with him. 
but then um, uh, uh, oh, I can't think of her name now. It's just drawn a blank. Um, she <laughs> kept a couple of zombies on a lead um, to Michonne. Michonne. Yeah, Michonne kept a couple of zombies on the lead. You know, like she was out for a Sunday walk, and um, that kept all the other zombies away. So that was an interesting sort of concept. Um, the the walk, the short of the dead one was interesting. And sorry, Stacey, if you're going to watch it, we've just given you a spoiler alert, but uh, there you go. Too bad, so sad. <laughs> um, but uh, the fact that he, he carked it at the end anyway, and it's like they try to think, okay, how can we put a happy spin on what is actually a very depressing thing? Oh, we'll keep him like he's locked up in the garage and they're playing the game and whatever else. But you think in the end it's like, yeah, but he's still dead, dude. You can't, like, do anything with him. And, and yeah, it's it sort of works, but it kind of doesn't at the same time. And you were mentioning – sorry, go on. I was going to say quickly, I know how that would work with Daniel. Daniel would have a friend that was done that playing video games, but the only time he could beat him. Anyway, continue. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that thing you said? Um, you made a Shaun of the Dead and – and oh, yeah, Michonne. And the thing with Michonne, yeah. I thought in Walking Dead, she said if you cut the arms off and you break the jaw off, they're harmless. They don't try and do anything. They actually um, – uh, they just wander around and they're completely placid, as in the zombies. And I thought, well, I can take the jaw off, I can understand. The arms, so, okay, make of that what you will. And it, it does make for a very interesting sight. Also in World War Z, uh, I thought this was very <laughs> – you do wonder how close to reality this would be if it happened in real life, where the CIA guy said all of North Korea in a space of a 24-hour period had everybody's teeth pulled out. Right, of 24 million people, so they couldn't bite. No biting, no infection. And it's like, you know, one of the world's bit of social engineering, right? You, you go, like a million dentists just appear out of nowhere and they just lay down and go, bang, 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 bang. And it was like, yeah, it's a bit bit intense, isn't it? So um, there you go. Well, but it makes when you don't... You can't bite and nothing happens. So, and that was also, um, oh, that's right. It was in Fear the Walking Dead where you got the old couple, right? And the the lady dies, and because she's got false teeth, which are in the glass on the side, he holds her up, and she's just necking him. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fucking out. That's you, and he gets that's a gun, you. and he shoots himself through both of them, kills them both together. But the fact that she's oh, <laughs> it's, it sounds funny, but it's actually quite a serious moment. And, oh, well, <laughs> and well, that's, when that's when you're switching from bite to suck. So because it's like. You could almost. I looked at that in, in, in the show. I think, and depending on your perspective, you could take that as a bit of a pseudo, a pseudo erotic sort of moment. There, this dead yeah. person sitting there. Rah, 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 rah. It's, it's like you get a really big hickey on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, what do I do with this gross? Space, yeah. The other uh, thing in World War II that I found interesting was that there was certain people that the zombies would just go around because they were already broken or something, or had something that that didn't affect them, and the zombies would just go around them. That was World War Z. If you were infected with a terminal illness, right? He's Captain Nerd here, just knows all this crap. Uh, if you were infected with a terminal illness, like cancer and whatever else, uh, yeah, they would just bypass you completely. And that's how they figured out at the end that if they infect people with a disease, uh, they'll be left alone and then they can go and kill all the zombies and stuff. Um, but um, but that's what made that movie work so well because they just appear, I don't know, at the start, you know, when, when they're driving down, this is World War Z we're talking about. Um, when the zombies first start appearing. And, of course, the transition time from being bitten to changing is like seven seconds. You remember that? He's doing the countdown. Mm. It's like, mate, that is just not good. There's just no time to think of anything. And and people are just panicking and just doing their stuff. And it's like, friggin' hell, yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's why it works so well. And, um, that's, yes. That's very, why you very, need to be good at headshots and there's never a good time for a reload, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very funny because both World War Z and one of the Fear the Walking Dead um, web series was set on aeroplanes. And, of course, when you've got zombies on aeroplanes, it is never going to end well. It's as, it's as simple as that, right? And in World War Z, when they're, one half of the plane is infected and the other half isn't, and they're trying to stack up all the suitcases, and one suitcase <laughs> drops off, and it's like, oh, dear. <laughs> a bit like zombies on trains, isn't it? Sort of nowhere to go. Well, it, was, yeah, exactly right. it was almost like they took that from snakes on a plane. They went, well, we'll just put all the all the luggage here and they won't be able to get through. It's like, you guys are just a little bit wrong. Just hide in the toilet. You'll be safe. Yeah. Because in that web series, there's one woman who ended up being in Fear the Walking Dead for a very short period of time. She was the only one. She was obviously the pop culture fan who knew straight away that, hey, we've got a zombie infestation happening here on this airplane because these dudes, like, carked it in the dunnies. And, uh, and no one else would listen to it, naturally. And, uh, uh, of course... She knew what was going on. So if something starts going a bit weird around the world, 
you know, and COVID issues notwithstanding, uh, all of us watching the show and us three, we'll be going, mate, the apocalypse, apocalypse has begun. So uh, there you go. The, um, question, the question is, though, if something does happen, do you guys have your zombie plan ready? Yeah, it's called Kiss My Ass Goodbye. So uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll shoot a zombie zombies in an elevator. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we'll shoot a zombie be zombies in an elevator. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Brains. Brains. Uh, what do you think of the unborn zombie? Oh, that's, is that a show or are you just talking about an actual concept? That's kind of freaky in it, eh? So, a dude who's born oh. dead. Yeah. I was going to say, if two zombies are having sex, and thanks, Michelle, I know I'm just, just old enough to say the word sex. If two zombies are having sex and they have a, another zombie, you know, when a mummy zombie loves a daddy zombie just that much that they have a baby zombie. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe its first word would be brain, not mint in box collectible like Dags wants. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. So there you go. And I also like how you got nicknames for these things. Like in, we, in The Walking Dead, they're called Walkers. In yeah. World War Z, they're called Zeke. Okay. Uh, a couple of times they get mentioned as Zeke. So uh, I reckon that's actually quite interesting. And everybody's got this thing about bloody Doctor Who. How do you get Doctor Who into zombie mo shows, mate? What's the deal with that? So there you go. Well, Peter Capaldi was in the in the scene um, when they go to break into the was it the World Health Organization? Oh, or something like that? Yes, World Health Organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, now who's the nerd? <laughs> I'll tell you what. Oh yeah. Well, you got to remember. Yeah, big fan of this stuff. So it's it, it's it's very very cool. Um, but yeah, dead dudes walking around doing what as dead dudes do, which is uh, not ideal. Um, what else we got there, everybody? We sort of put up, put up Paul Anderson's um, thing because it just Anderson. gave me an idea. For the oh, very last the one, the dead don't die. I just thought of something. If the zombies don't eat brains, that well, they only eat brains and don't eat anything else. A new movie called the um, the dead don't pie. So. <laughs> <laughs> We need to get into the hard-hitting questions and the real, like, delve into the real psychological stuff. A pregnant woman is bitten by, will the baby be a zombie? I mean, the the physical, the mental image, it'd be like doing an alien, just ripping itself, you know. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Um, that's a freaky baby one. Blast. What the baby that? Hang on, hang on. I think the question is, what are you not telling us, Daniel? <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. A baby zombie, that would be pretty funny, eh? So instead of going, go, 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 be going, brains, brains, brains. Um, it'd, it'd be brains. Like that. Actually, it'd we, be well, the idea is, Aaron, we don't want to sort of like talk about everything ourselves. We want people to chuck in their suggestions and good old uh, brain dead. Um, I actually don't remember brain dead. Uh, I remember bad taste and stuff like that, but it doesn't, um, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, and I agree with you, Claire. I think, yeah, if a pregnant woman, becomes a zombie or dies, the baby will be okay. So uh, that's, I think, is the go for that. But Brain Dead, I don't remember Brain Dead. Do you, Jeffro? That would be something you'd know? I've seen it. Uh, I mean, it was his first movie, I think, just off the top of my head. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it is sort of uh, a really low-budget um, movie that he actually appeared in himself. And, uh, yeah, I, I saw it so long ago, I can barely remember it. Yeah, yeah, I can't either. So there you go. Uh, very good, very good. Brain dead, the flavor of humor. Brain dead, the same flavor of humor is a bad, yeah. What well, tells us like if it was a Peter Jackson movie from back in the days, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, there you go. And I think to uh, add to the question, yes, I, I think, um, yeah, we talked about war bodies before. I think adds his other question, uh, would be right. Uh, zombies would uh, starve at the White House, yeah. I don't get, I don't get it. No brains, Trump, there's oh, no brain, yeah, and, yeah, that's yeah. Everyone, <laughs> stuff, yeah. Very good. Uh, Warm Bodies. So you mentioned that earlier, I think, didn't someone? Yeah. yeah. Warm Bodies is about a film where everyone's sort of in a in a state of... Uh, and it's not until they find love that their hearts melt and, and become pumping organs again and they live happily ever after with zombie babies. Um, I just realised I missed this comment. I put the comment up, but I missed something. Aaron had said, da, 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 Peter Jackson, masterpiece. I wouldn't call Brain Dead a masterpiece. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is a masterpiece, but Brain Dead... Oh, and, uh, Kind of it's not a matter, really. matter of personal taste. <laughs> um, oh, good on you, Colin. There's always one, isn't there? In the next zombie apocalypse, you're escaping to the Colvin timeline. Yeah, good on you. Always one wanting to bring up that old uh, chestnut. Absolutely fantastic. So, golly, it's just crazy. So, very good stuff. Everybody loves a good zombie thing. So, uh, and and all shows and movies have their own interpretation of what they should look like, what they should sound like. And uh, yeah, 
Claire, Claire's a fan of warm bodies. You can interpret that any way you want. <laughs> so, um, oh, here we go. Brain dead. Was it a Sumatran zombie monkey infects New Zealand? God, there you go. How about that? Hey, eh? golly, yes, yes. What was the name of the monkey? COVID, probably. So, uh, there you go. No, it's all good. Very good stuff. Um, all right, so it's actually 9.30. We've still got 17 people, actually 16 people. Someone's already bailed out and left us. So um, uh, watch that. Just, they, they finished it right off, didn't they? So there you go. Very good. Um, any other uh, final zombie-related comments that you want to chuck in, uh, lads? I think we've sort of hit our Z, our, done our A to Z of zombies. We did pretty well, actually, and I expect, there will be more zombie related productions in the future because it seems to be a franchise that just yep. keeps on giving. Well, they're well, doing we'll, a. Sorry, MPS, go. You're probably going to say exactly what I'm about to say. So you say it. We'll see if I say the same thing. Yeah, so they're doing a new two, uh, not two part miniseries, like a, a short miniseries from uh, another sequel to uh, The Walking Dead from with kids who were born after the zombie apocalypse started. So they've actually grown up in that world. And apparently goes for 10 episodes or something like that. So um, that's coming out well, in the next year or two years or whatever it's called. So, um, yeah, just intriguing. So anything else, dude? No, I think that's about it. It's for Daniel's last comment, which was very clever. Uh, it just won't die. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, yes, Greg, we did actually bring up black sheep. So uh, were they zombie sheep? I can't remember. I only saw the movie once, uh, but I think they were. That was the funny thing about it because they just filmed normal sheep. Right, and, you, and then they do the special effects version of the sheep, and, of course, they're all, like, hunting dudes down and chewing them up and doing whatever. So that alone is just kind of funny. So there you go. Um, so there are future topics. Werewolves, vampires, and mummies. Yeah, well, the thing is – hang on. So the thing is uh, we don't want to get into the horror thing too much. We may save it for the Halloween talk on uh, October the 31st. For those who have forgotten, October the 31st at 8, 8 o'clock, make sure you tune to this channel for uh, – the Adams family and the monsters. So, um, uh, yes, and uh, yeah, we may sort of cover that topic off then when it'll be a bit more in vogue. How good is that? I reckon that would be kind of, kind of cool. So there you go. All right, we are going to uh, buzz off. We had a bit of fun with this one tonight, and it's all been very good and very exciting. Uh, so, yes, join us next week for the Big Star Wars show with Aaron. It's worth watching uh, uh, primarily for him, not for Nestle and Pierce and myself. We're just a bunch of dudes. But uh, we'll get a real expert on board who knows his Star Wars stuff, which is very, very cool. Uh, and we'll also be promoting the because I don't think it's we don't we're actually not on until the yes we will be back for one more episode before the end of the month. Yeah. So we'll promote our uh, Halloween thing once again. Very good. Um, all right. So oh yes, Dust to Dawn. Yeah, I remember that one. That was uh, actually mm. Quentin Tarantino was in that movie, too, mm. which is kind of. Yeah. So all right, we're gonna buzz off. We're gonna leave you to it. And as always, make sure you. <gasps> Stay nerdy. Okay. Er, 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 er.